Buenos días, mi nombre es Astrid Silva, soy la directora de Dream Big Nevada um, y tenemos noticias muy buenas hoy. So we're going to go ahead and do this in uh, English. Uh, my name is Astrid Silva and I am the director of Dream Big Nevada. And we promised you guys that the day we had good news, I would be on here yelling. I said I would jump on the couch, but I'm not going to jump on the couch today. Um, but um, we have good news about DACA and new applications. And so we're going to take it to um, one of our awesome attorneys, uh, Katia Pereira, based out of uh, Las Vegas, Nevada, um, to give us a little bit more about what just happened. Katia? I am so excited. And so today we're going to talk about this great news. DACA is back, baby. DACA is back. And um, so we have, this is the most important um, moment to remind you, you have to wear a mask. You have to wear a mask because now you're going to have to get out of your houses and get some paperwork and you have to wear a mask all the time. So please don't forget, uh, uh, we, the fourth circuit, the Fourth Circuit Court of Appeals, which is a federal court, uh, just issued an order telling the government that they must receive new applications for DACA. They must. They have no other choice. They have to receive them. They cannot reject them. So I'm so excited. I am. Um, it's it's amazing how 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 God protect us because that's that's how I see it. No matter what the government does. Uh, at the end of the day, uh, dreamers are here to stay and we can see it and we can feel it and we need to take advantage of this moment. We need to file new applications because if we don't, then uh, we run the risk of waiting for whatever President Trump is going to do and then we don't end up getting anything. So uh, the number one advice today is we need to file new applications. Okay, so we're really excited. Um, all of you who have already received our DACA packet for new applicants, um, all the information is there. Everybody else, we're gonna make our DACA app, uh, packet uh, accessible to everybody. Um, we just wanna make sure that you guys are going to the right locations. Um, we wanna make sure that you're getting the help from the right resources. Um, and we have a question, Katia, about when can people start applying? Today. Today, dijo la abogada, Katia Pereira, you know, she has all my trust and, you know, she's saying we can apply today. The Supreme, uh, the Supreme Court told us June 18th, remember June 18th, USCIS was supposed to give us an answer and they've waited until today. Well, they didn't even wait. The, the fourth, uh, fourth district court is the one that's telling them. So um, I know some of you guys are a little bit nervous. I know some of you are a lot more eager. Um, so if you want that information, we're gonna, uh, we'll comment later on how it's gonna be accessible on our webpage. Um, but this is this is important. Um, not even important. This is exciting. Our community has been waiting for this for so long, um, and now it's here. So, Katia, who are some of the people that can apply for uh, DACA? Okay, so we have. To, let's go through all the requirements, uh, but let's not go like everybody else does. Let's let's go in, in practical ways. Okay, so you must have entered the United States before June 15, 2007. It don't I, I'm not asking you if you entered for six months, for 10 months, they you live here since before 2007. All I need to know is that you entered the United States before June 15, 2007. And if you did, you have to do it before the age of 16. So if your first entry was after the age of 16, you are not a dreamer you must have had entered before the age of 16 and you have to have proof of that so what is proof and that's that's the the first obstacle i don't have any documents you must have to be able to prove it so how do you do it you have your vaccine records you have medical records dentist records you have school transcripts you have um traveling travel tickets you have uh the airline tickets or the bus tickets or uh, something with your name and uh, in some document with your name that will help so we need to prove that you enter before june 15 2007 and at that moment you were you were 15 or younger and then we are gonna ha have to prove that you've been living here since 2007 until now 
And many of you will say, I, but I went back to my country. As long as you went back to your country for less than six months, we are cool. We are cool. So you can travel from 2007 until 2012, no problem, as long as your trips were less than six months. Now, after 2012, I pray that you did not travel. But if you did travel, I need, I need that trip to be less than six months and no stops at the border, no problems, no deportations, no voluntary departures with ICE, nothing after 2012. Okay? So far, so good. Are you following me, Astrid? Okay. Astrid, don't call me Pereira anymore. I have a new, a new last name. I'm oh. here now. Oh, I like it. I know. I got divorced. I changed my name. <laughs> so, la la Quiroz. Yes. Okay. So, so we have to um, enter before 2007, before 16, and we have to have been living in the United States from 2007 until now. And if we travel outside the United States, our trips have to be really short. And after 2012, no deportations, no stops at the border, no nothing. Okay. Now I have to, um, I have to be right now in school, and those are for the kids who are still in high school, who are dreamers, who are going to apply. Those are the easiest of the cases because all I need to show is my school transcripts, and I'm ready to roll. But if you are older than a, a, a teenager and you need to prove that you've been here since 2007 till now, now your school transcript is going to end sometime in the past. And after your school transcript ends, we need to show that you've been here until now. And we need to prove evidence of continuous physical presence. And continuous physical presence is a technical term that says, I've been here and I've been residing in the United States, and I can I have to show that in several time increments. So for every year, I want six pieces, six documents. And if you can make those documents every two months, then even better. And many of you will say, "I, Katya, you're asking too much. I don't have that, right?" Well, um, you have to try for that. If you cannot do that then we your case gets more complicated because we are going to have to explain to the immigration officer that you don't have that kind of evidence but you have circumstantial evidence let me let me explain what circumstantial evidence is for example i don't have papers every two months but i have i have a ticket that i got for speeding in january and i have um la quinceanera of my sister of april and I have the picture of La Quinceañera, and I have the invitation of the Quinceañera to show the date of the Quinceañera. And I also have the gym records from August that show that I went, that I signed up the contract in August, and I went for the first month, and then I never showed up again, right? True story. That's what I normally do. <laughs> and, um, and then I have the pictures of Christmas of that year or my new year's picture that shows the year and i'm in las vegas on the strip waiting for the countdown and i also have my taxes of that year and my taxes show that i made fifteen thousand dollars right and so with all of that i can make the argument that even though i only have two pieces of paper with my name for that year plus my taxes i am showing you circumstantial evidence the pictures and the gym records and to to give you the impression that i've been here the whole year so you we have to become creative it's not it's 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 not black and white we we're gonna have a lot of gray areas and we have to work with them and we have to make them work okay so we talk about the age we talk about the uh, the evidence of physical presence we talk about our exits and entries now we're gonna talk about schooling uh, because if you're in school, we said it's it's easy, it's cool, it's fast. If we are outside of the school time of our lives, then we need to prove that we graduated high school. And it's not easy to graduate high school. Many of us have to work and we drop out of high school because we have to help at home or we have to survive, right? So what happens? I have, Katia, I have four kids right now. I can't stop working to go back to school. Well, I'm not asking that you that you stop working. I ask, I'm asking that you sacrifice and you work and you go to school at night because you need to sign up right now 
and you need to start uh, in, a, in in start taking classes. Now, right now we're in the middle of a pandemic, and so if you didn't graduate high school and you didn't get your GD, I suggest that you call the school district in your area, wherever that is, and you ask if there is any way that you can enroll in some type of online lessons uh, where that are accredited by that that school district. That's the key. If, if you go online and you just apply to any GED online, a uh, big mistake. Because if that place is not accredited, then it doesn't count for the immigration officer. So man, they sure. give your money back. They keep your money. So please be very careful with the accredited um, entities. Right? Because we've seen that, Astrid. We've seen so many people who think it's easier just to get it online and get the certificate and the immigration officers are saying no. No, 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 no. It doesn't work like that. It has to be valid for the state where you live. Okay. Right. So so you uh, you didn't graduate high school. You don't want to study the GED because you are bad in math and you're never going to learn or whatever. But you went to school and you got your degree as an electrician or as a plumber and you went to technic, you know, technical school. That school is good for DACA. If you have your degree as a plumber or your or air conditioning or whatever trading school that you did, that that helps for DACA. Um, if you if you oh this is a very important question. If you are if you have a, a mental disability, if you are if you have or your brother is Down syndrome or you have a physical disability and you you are blind or you are mute and you went to a special school. Uh, that school counts for DACA. Uh, so if, as long as you graduated, and most of those kids graduate, they go through the process and they graduate. So they can also apply for DACA. They are dreamers. So don't think that because they they went to special needs school, that doesn't count. It does count. Okay? So we talk about schooling. Now let's talk about uh, criminal records. Um, in order to qualify for DACA, you need to uh, not have a, a, an aggravated felony. And do you know what's an aggravated felony, uh, Astrid? No, I don't. What is it? Okay, so it's a crime. In our, the easy way to understand what's an aggravated felony, it's, it's a crime of violence where a sentence of one year or more may be imposed. So it doesn't mean that you went to jail for a year or that the judge said you had to go to jail for a year. It only matters that at some point that person could have had a one-year sentence. So, okay. yeah, as long as it says on there more than 365 days, even yes. if I didn't go to jail? Yeah, even if you did not go to jail, even if the sentence was suspended. Because in, in, in the immigration system, criminal system, there is something we call suspended suspended sentences, which means... I am gonna I'm gonna order that you should go to jail for three hundred for one year, but because I'm I'm a good judge and I'm a nice guy, I'm gonna let you exchange that year of jail for two years of probation. Right? So you don't ever go to jail, you do that two years probation, but in fact your sentence was for a year of jail. And immigration is not going to look at the at, at what actually happened. Immigration is going to look at what the paper says. Understood. Okay. So if you have a felony, then you cannot apply for DACA. And what am I going to do? Well, uh, you are kind of technically screwed because once you have the felony. Uh, under this administration, before before this administration, I would have told you, oh, we can go back to the criminal court and ask the judge to reduce the sentence, or we can go back and do this or post conviction relief. But right now, none of it works. That the government has changed it now so that we cannot do that. And the only thing we can ask for is a pardon, a government pardon. And the problem with that is that you should do it if you have a felony. Forget about DACA. Let's work on the government pardon, especially if you are completely rehabilitated. But right now, it takes about two years in Nevada to get a government pardon. So we are totally outside the scope of DACA, right? When we think about the two years. But but anyways, if you have a felony, you're listening to me and you have a felony, 
let's work on a government pardon because today, tomorrow, later, we're going to need it. Okay, so if you have a felony, you cannot apply for DACA. If you have a DUI, you cannot apply for DACA. If you have two DUIs, don't even come close because then ICE is going to come after you, right? So if you have domestic violence, you cannot apply for DACA. If you had a fight that looked for domestic violence, most likely they're going to deny your case because this DACA is discretionary. And that's another thing we're going to talk in a few minutes. But um, so no DUI, no DACA, um, no felony. And the, the hardship part of DACA is that if you have three small crimes, three steel crimes, Mm -hmm. you cannot apply for that so let's say let's say i i'm i'm i i i like to have fun i go out with my friends and one time i got a ticket for jaywalking and then i got a ticket for trespassing and then i got arrested for i don't know petty theft or shoplifting i'm done i cannot apply for daca i cannot have three misdemeanors and apply for daca so be very careful with all of these criminal issues because um, right now with the big anti-immigrant sentiment that we have, a lot of officers feel empowered to look for reasons to deny. So we want to apply, but we want to apply when we know that in the discretion of the officer, he should approve our case. We don't want to apply if we are in this gray area when it's most likely than not, that I will not succeed. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yep, I'm taking all the notes. Okay. So you so guys that, have notes at home too. Yes, and I, I hope people at home are, are understanding um, the way I talk because I'm very Peruvian, so I talk super fast. Mm -hmm. And um, and I, I talk- okay, we can replay the video. <laughs> Okay, so we talk about crimes and we talk about uh, all the other requirements. Now let's talk about immigration record because the same, the same way people can have a criminal record, people can also have an immigration record. And what is an immigration record? An immigration record is, is that the history of anybody who has had any contact with Border Patrol, ICE, the Office of Immigration, or the Court of Immigration. Okay, so immigration court, ICE, border patrol, if you've had any contact with them, you have an immigration record and you should apply for DACA with an immigration lawyer. You should not go to any, uh, if you have a criminal record or you have an immigration record, you should go with a lawyer. You shouldn't have go with uh, a notario never, a llena papeles never, right? But there are uh, several organizations that will help you that are accredited by the government. These are normally non-for-profits for places where you can do your process the cheapest way possible. And they are, you know, bless their hearts, they are angels who are helping all of our dreamers right now. But we cannot put on them the responsibility of taking, of working on our cases when we have any type of immigration record or criminal record, because those cases are complicated and lawyers should be the ones reviewing them, evaluating them, and working on them. So it's very important that we make that distinction, uh, that the clean cases go to an, an, an accredited or place, do them at a non-for-profit. Um, but if you have any type of record, please, please, please look for a lawyer. And like, you know, you know me, I'm never going to tell you come to me uh look for anybody you like anybody you like anybody you feel comfortable with uh but look for a lawyer never ayena papeles this is not the time to go to ayena papeles it's if they deny your case we are in this anti-immigrant world where it's not just that they can deny our case they can deny our case and then put us in in, in deportation proceedings and we don't want that we want to get our employment authorization so far, right. so wonderful. I'm, I'm, I, my notes are, are just running off. Uh, now, Abogada Quiroz, one of the questions that we're having a lot from people, um, and they're asking a lot, a lot, is the age limit. Can you, can you touch more on that? Because there's a lot of confusion about the 30. Because when I got DACA, I was 24. 
but now right. I'm two. So can you tell us a little bit more about how if I was 24, but now I'm 32, but in June of 2012, that's where the confusion lies. Can you explain that a little bit more to us? Yes. So in order to apply for DACA, you must have been born after June 15, 1981. If you were born after June 15, 1981, and you have all the other requirements, you can apply for DACA. But if you were born before June 15, 1981, you cannot apply. You don't qualify. You are disqualified because of your age. You needed to be under 31 on 2012, on June 15, 2012. It doesn't matter if right now you're 38. If you're 38 right now, you still can apply for DACA. You're still a dreamer as long as you have all the other requirements. But, uh, but it doesn't matter that you are over 31 right now. It only matters that on June 15, 2012, you were under 31. Thank you for clarifying that for us. We, we've had a lot of questions because people are trying to do math and um, June 15, 1981 is much more helpful to us. Right, right. And, and the problem is, and it's true because, because I see it every day, people go to the Yuna Papeles. In the Yuna Papeles, listen to Katia and listen to what whoever says, right? And they, they don't take notes like you. They just listen and they think they suddenly become lawyers out of listening. It doesn't work like that. It doesn't. And and that's why we want to make sure everybody, I think right now there's a lot of excitement. This We didn't get this announcement until maybe 30 minutes before we went live. Um, I know I know Abogada Quiroz went on her live within minutes of it. We were still trying to figure out what does this mean for us? So a lot of times people just hear on the news, people hear a 30 second snippet on the, on the, on the local news station and they don't get all the details. That's why it's so important um, that you get it. And especially for our young dreamers, that's why we're doing this for our young dreamers um, because a lot of them have told us, well, you know, my mom said, mi mamá dijo, my mom said, and that's why right now we wanted to make sure that this message is getting to all those those younger dreamers who um, sometimes have told us they don't they don't um, have access to our Spanish uh, speaking um, because they are they're they're a little bit younger they don't understand or they've grown up in very different backgrounds than we have um, and so we want to make sure that these young dreamers and so and so Abogada Quiroz, how old we we said this earlier but how old so right now I am 14 and a half years old can I apply. Only at 14 and a half, you can apply only if you have a deportation order. If you don't have a deportation order from a judge, then you must wait until you are 15. And we don't know what type of DACA will be when you are 15. But right now, DACA without a deportation order is for everybody that is 15 or, or more. So if you are 15 or more, you apply for DACA. If you are 15 and under, you can only apply for DACA if you have a deportation order. And you would probably ask me, how am I gonna have a deportation order if I'm a baby, right? If I'm a kid? Well, a lot of babies have deportation orders because parents bring them in, in their hands, right? And then they get caught at the border and then they're placed in, in the process to go to court with their parents and the parents don't show up. And so when the parents don't show up, the parent and the kid end up having a deportation order. Right. That, that, that makes a lot of sense. And we, I, I do want to address this. We've been having a few comments of, por favor, hable en español. La razón que estamos haciendo en esto en español, en inglés, perdón, es porque muchos de nuestros jovencitos a quien esto aplica nos han dicho que necesitan esta información en inglés. Entonces, como ustedes saben, nuestros en vivo siempre, la abogada Quiroz, los míos son en español, pero también queremos ofrecerles esta oportunidad a aquellos más jovencitos que no entienden esto, um, que por cualquier razón su español no es tan claro como algunos de, de ustedes. Entonces, vamos a, les aseguro que esta información la vamos a tener. Pueden ver el live de la abogada Quiroz, nosotros vamos a tener más, pero por este momento también queremos incluir a aquellos que son los más jovencitos que para ellos inglés es un lenguaje más natural para ellos. Y si hay algo que quiero decir en español, se lo quiero decir a los papás de estos dreamers. Um, déjense de payasadas y de que hay que no hay que aplicar porque después va a venir a ir a recogerlos. No. Este no es el momento para eso. ¿Ok? 
este es el momento para hacer que todos nuestros hijos que son dreamers apliquen. Este es el momento para empujar a mi muchacho que se salió de la high school y que ahora está viviendo en otro lado y que no quiere estudiar para meterlo, de la, agarrarlo de las orejas y llevarlo a que se, a, a que se apunte para el TV. Este es el momento de aplicar. Tenemos que inundar la oficina de inmigración, aunque la oficina de inmigración diga voy a cerrar, no tengo empleados, no puedo. No, 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 nada de eso nos importa. Tenemos que meter las aplicaciones. ¿Por qué? Porque no sabemos qué va a pasar. No sabemos, sabemos que el presidente Trump va a anunciar su propia versión de DACA, ¿right? Y lo más probable es que después de que él anuncie, vengan juicios. Y lo más probable es que eso se demore hasta, hasta que sepamos quién es el próximo presidente. Mientras tanto, nuestros hijos tienen que estar protegidos. Y la única manera de protegerlos es teniendo una aplicación de DACA dentro de la oficina de inmigración. Así que déjense de payasadas de que te van a deportar si aplicas para DACA. No es verdad. No es verdad. Y la, y la prueba de que no es verdad es la realidad. Lo que ha pasado en estos últimos ocho años de DACA, donde miles de miles de muchachos han tenido permiso de trabajo y no han sido deportados a no ser que hayan metido la pata y se hayan metido en algún lugar. Pero si no, aquí están, están trabajando, tienen permiso de trabajo, tienen seguro social, tienen licencia de conducir, tienen mejores trabajos de los que pudieran tener indocumentados. Así que ahora es cuando. Yes. So go, re, go, don't, well, renew your DACA. If you have DACA, renew your DACA. But if you are uh, one of, you know, I call them baby dreamers, but I know there's a lot of older dreamers um, who just didn't have their GED, who didn't have information. Um, one of the organizations that we work with and we uh, really trust is informedimmigrant.com. I know that there's a lot of comments asking for California. Um, I saw some other states up there. We, uh, for Dream Big Nevada, we work out of Nevada. So the resources that we um, that we provide are based out of Nevada. Um, if you have other questions on where to find an accredited, it's very important that you find an accredited service provider. Um, I know that um, my family is in trouble because we went to a notario in the 90s. That's the reason that we ended up in the problems we are. Please go to somebody who's accredited. And as Abogada Quiro said earlier, If you have a criminal record, if you have a difficult case, please find somebody who can help you um, in a much more, uh, uh, you know, capacitated way that they can help you with this criminal record because this is something very serious. But also, we don't want you to not um, take advantage of this opportunity just because of fear. Um, and so we have questions of um, my fear is that my application is rejected. Um, so, Abogada Quiroz, what happens if an application is rejected? Vaya, no me digas, Abogada Quiroz, because it sounds too serious. My name, just call me Katia, because everybody knows me as Katia. Okay, okay, we'll do it. Okay, so um, what happens if my application get, get re gets rejected? Yes. Well, I figure out why was it rejected, and I file again. They do send you a letter, right, that says why? Yeah. Yeah, so rejected, it's not bad. I mean, um, I am a lawyer and I am compulsive, right? And I pay attention to all the details. And I seriously, I mean, like I have OCD when it comes to these things. And it may be, I sometimes, I, I sometimes, no, I got an application rejected three months ago because they said that I had not sent a birth certificate, which was totally a lie. The birth certificate was there. The immigration officer who received my application did not see it and rejected the whole thing, right? So it happens. You do, Sometimes you do everything right and it just happens that the immigration officer will not see it and will reject your application. Is that bad? No. All you have to do is put two copies of the, of the birth certificate and send it back. Uh, it, it happens. I cannot tell you that everything is going to be perfect. Now, if your case is denied, what happens? Well, you figure out why was it denied. And if it's something that you can fix, then you fix the reason of the denial and you send it back. Now, if it's denied because you have a criminal record or an immigration record that makes that that gives them reason to deny, then that's different. You should have never applied in the first place. But if you if you applied knowing that you were at a risk, then Before, I would, I would sometimes take the risk, letting my client know. Uh, right now, I would probably not take the risk. 
because we are on, on these times, hard times, right? And I would wait until until something good happens and things get easier. Katia, we're, we're so grateful for your time. And I know this won't be the last time that we have this. Um, we were so excited when we, we got this news today that we just, we had to we had to go ahead and do this. And especially for all our, our younger dreamers, um, we will be putting um, the links up for, for um, if you do have any questions or anything here in Las Vegas. So please, Las Vegas um, and, and the larger Nevada because they are now doing um, some online appointments. Um, the two accredited organizations are Casa del Inmigrante, um, which is a Fundación Immigrant Home Foundation, um, and the UNLV Immigration Clinic. So with Casa del Inmigrante, some of you guys may have known them in the past as Hermandad Mexicana, uh, Transnacional. So please make sure that you're going to accredited organizations. If you need a lawyer, please go to an uh, AILA lawyer. Um, that's very important. Um, Katia never gives her phone number ever because she wants to make sure that she's fair to everybody. But if you want to Google her, you can most certainly Google her and contact her as well as some of the other awesome lawyers that we have. Um, and again, if you're outside of Nevada, informed immigrant, you pop in your zip code and it sends you somewhere um, that's close to you. Um, and, and if anything, right, our information is universal. It's just kind of the, uh, the transcripts, you're going to need your transcripts, you're going to need your GED information. Um, we will post that up as soon as we have it ready to go for you guys. Um, we've Those of you that have signed up since June 18th already have it. So good for you guys for being on top of this. Um, but everybody else, we're, we're trying to get it to you without crashing our system because this is so important. Um, and then if anything, um, you know, like right now, hold on. Right now, we're, we are because of this pandemic. One of the blessings of the pandemic is that we've we learned how to work remotely. So um, the Immigrant Home Foundation, La Casa del Inmigrante in Las Vegas, it's a place that is very dear to my heart. I can attest to the quality of their, their work. They're an accredited organization. I am a volunteer there. And so wh wherever you are, if you don't trust the organizations in your city or you're not comfortable, send an email to Luz, Luz at immigrantfoundation.org, and we they can work with your DAC application uh, remotely. If you email everything, they email back, they, you guys make a phone call, whatever it is that we need to do. Uh, at the Immigrant Home Foundation, you have to pay a small fee, but it's very small compared to that, you know, the lawyers are going to charge $1,500, $2,000, $3,000 because it's a lot of work considering that they have to review, you know, 13 years of your life. Um, at the Immigrant Home Foundation, I, I it's going to be probably a few hundred dollars. So, um, but remember, it's for the clean cases, clean cases. If you don't have a clean case, don't uh, don't go to an accredited place. Don't go to an notario. Don't go to a Yena Papeles. Look for a lawyer. Look for a lawyer. So remember, if you have a clean case, which is your kids in high school, you're in high school, you don't have any criminal record, you don't have anything, go to your credit organization. And what Katia said is correct. Now we've had to learn how to look. We we didn't used to do these videos. Uh, I know Katia did, but we didn't. Um, and we've been we've been creating these videos now. Um, also, for those of you, um, you know, we do share an office with Casa del Inmigrante. So Dream Big Nevada is housed. Now, because of the governor's ordinance in Nevada, we are very limited to how many people we can take. So please call ahead for an appointment or um, as Katia said, send an email. Um, I would love to have you guys. We would have had this in our big room and Katia and I would have been in there and it would have been exciting but unfortunately we can't that's why you know we had our masks at the beginning um life has changed and so please um before you consider coming down here um I ask that you call yeah, no. <laughs> it's, no gonna, it's gonna be saturated and let me tell you las llamadas van a tomar tiempo it will take a while to get back to you but do not get frustrated and go to a notario you are going to make a mistake um, for not waiting. Now, look, if you don't file your DACA today, the That's world is going to end. Let's, let's give it a few days. Get the information. You still have to gather all your papers anyways. So let's make sure that we, we are calm about this, excited, but also very calm um, that we do understand that this is a process. Any process that exists, there's going to be some time to this. You have to gather your paperwork. Um, you're going to have to scan it. You're going to have to do all these things. So look, I know a lot of you are going to freak out and go pawn your car right now for the 495 Just slow down. Do it, 
we need you to we need you to apply but let's let's take things calmly um and and as katia said earlier and she said it in spanish mama said it in english now is not the time to play around and say i'm gonna do it later i'm gonna do it next year um you know my kid ice is gonna come get me help your kids or help yourself get this opportunity because if the trump administration ends it again we're going to be in the same position we were yesterday where you didn't have daca well said <laughs> thank you <laughs> thank you so much katia we really appreciate it um and all of you guys um inmigrando con katia is her awesome um instagram facebook um just go for any questions you have katia has an amazing ability to be able to to share information in a kind way that um a lot of people don't have anymore so please join her um and also check out, we will be updating our webpage right now. I, I, I dare not show you, but Dulce right now, all of you who know Dulce is my deputy director. She is right now updating the website. She is creating all the information for you guys to make sure that you get it. So please, no hay excusa por tener información incorrecta. There's no excuse to have incorrect information. Um, we will get that out to you. Just give us a few minutes. Okay, well, thank you so much for having me here today. Thank you. I you, I love Dream Big Nevada, and uh, so to any of the Immigrando Con Katia fans that are listening right now, join, support, help Dream Big Nevada. It's it's with the work of dreamers that we're changing uh, consciousness about immigrants in the United States. It's with the work of dreamers like Astrid at Dream Big Nevada that we are letting the world know that immigrants are good people, are honest people, are hardworking, that we have a voice that needs to be heard through love, through sharing, compassion, love to others, not through hate. So we have to support them. We have to help them. Bye, guys. Bye. Thank you. Bye.